I'm going to call to order this meeting on Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is Wednesday, March 2nd, and we will begin with our public statement read by Commissioner Oh, Good morning. There's a reason I'm wearing blue and yellow today. And as we get ready to read this, I'd like to acknowledge what's going on in the Ukraine um, and to state that I am in solidarity with the people there. And I imagine that my colleagues are as well. So we, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear and we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you so much. I will note for the record that all three members of the Board of Commissioners are present today. And uh, we move on to our department updates. And we have Ms. Cobble here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today, I just want to share a few things about some changes in terms of metrics and, and what we're looking at. This week, the two metric score on our Indiana map will fall into yellow and just miss blue by a tiny margin. So we kind of did that last week as well, just barely missed it. Remember that the advisory map will not move to yellow because of that two week uh, requirement before those change colors. But also remember that the sharp declines of our current situation make that measure uh, less relevant than it was when we had lots of roller coaster numbers. This week, our cases per 100,000 fell below 100 and into double digits. So excellent news. The positivity rate fell to just under 6%. And it's continuing each day to go down. Overall trends for hospitalization, symptomatic testing, water sampling data, all continue to indicate declines. Our rolling daily average of cases is now around 20. And the last time we saw that number was in October. So if my, my little book of numbers uh, looks like when I went back that October was the last time that number was in the 20s. So it's been a while. This past week has had lots of changes. Now, so far, and overall, that may come mid-month. Um, we're waiting to hear more about that. But the CDC did change school bus requirements and make that more of a local decision based on local numbers and circumstances. So um, that, that was a more recent change. With the shift in the pandemic phase, the CDC has also changed metrics used to determine disease burden and recommended mitigation measures for counties. The updated CDC guidance looks at the number of new cases, which they did before, but it, it groups them um, in less than 200 cases per 100,000 or 200 or more cases per 100,000 in the past week based on provider reporting. The CDC also recommends including hospital data, so new COVID uh, patients who are admitted and their bed capacity, along with other things that we would be looking at, right? All the things that we have been looking at, reports, uh, maybe from schools, from our water sampling, just various things that we're seeing. One thing that I think is very important, because I've already had some people uh, comment or ask me about this, uh, with the CDC, when you are looking at their levels, you're going to see that it says that we are high, but remember that data always has lag time, right? Always. We're always looking back to figure that out. The CDC that it, data that's posted has a greater lag time than our state and local data. So we're looking back a week or two, and the CDC is then looking back a little bit further. So it's important when you look at those levels to keep that in mind. And 
the converse could be true. So it's going to take us a while. It's going to look worse a little while longer, right? Until it catches up. And if we were to take a turn for the worse in the future, we're going to look better on that CDC page than we really are currently until that catches up. So just keep that in mind. And one example that I want to give you, this week uh, looks like we should be right around 43 cases per 100,000. Excellent number. Uh, last week, we were at 175. But February 16th, we were at 310 cases per 100,000. So you can see that the CDC is really looking more at that mid-February number, right, as opposed to, to just last week. They are updating on Thursdays their data. So again, it's not changed daily, it's changed weekly. So we'll continue to assess our local data, including our hospital data and all the other data sets that we have been um, as we continue to make decisions um, about our community level. The recommendations for wearing masks when in indoor public places is when the community level is high. Of course, there are times and circumstances when individuals should be wearing a mask uh, based on their own personal risk, regardless of the community level. As masks become more optional, it is important to remember that many people will choose to wear a mask for their own safety, for the safety of a family member or a friend, and some people will wear them simply for their own level of comfort. That's okay. Uh, masks optional, uh, let's respect each other's choices in that and not assume that somebody is wearing a mask um, for, you know, let's just assume that they are wearing it because they're trying to protect somebody else. They have an underlying health condition. Let's give everybody the best of intentions. Testing does remain available, although state funded sites are beginning to close. Uh, coronavirus.gov is still your best place to find testing options. Uh, your providers, pharmacies still um, are options as well. The Gravity site here in Monroe County is open Monday through Wednesday and Friday, 8 to 4. They're open on Thursdays, 10 to 6. They're no longer open on the weekends. Our local vaccination rates could be higher. They are hovering around that 60% mark. Can't quite get them to, to go much higher than that at the moment. So please know vaccinations are available and our shot.in.gov will help you find um, the best vaccination site to meet your needs. And we will continue to provide updates through social media, our biweekly press conference, these meetings and our webpage as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cuddle. Um, great to hear the good news. Um, we hope it sticks. And um, next we'll hear, let's see if there's questions from uh, Commissioner Giffins. No, I was gonna ask where people could go get tested and get vaccinated and Ms. Cuddle answered those questions. <laughs> Commissioner Jones? I'm just glad that we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Again, we appreciate all of uh, your help and your department and the board and uh, throughout all of this, it's been a couple years now. <laughs> and uh, so this is, um, this is really good news to have and, and, um, and we're, we're hopeful for the future. All right. Um, so uh, any other departments have an update for us today? see any. Uh, so um, we do have um, a proclamation for today. Yes. Um, whereas women of every age, race, class, sexual identity, sexual orientation, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of Monroe County in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas women have played and continue to play a critical economic, cultural, and social role in every aspect of our community by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside 
and outside of the home. And whereas women have played a unique role throughout the history of the nation by providing the majority of the volunteer labor force. Sorry, and women have been particularly important in the establishment of early charitable, philanthropic, and cultural institutions in Monroe County and across the nation. And women have served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement. And women have been leaders, not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and other movements, including the peace movement, which create a more fair and just society for all. We want to honor and acknowledge the expanded role women are playing in all sectors and all levels of government by celebrating our first female <laughs> president and the nomination of a black woman to the US Supreme Court. We rejoice in seeing women in these new positions as they serve as role models for all. And we recognize the work of the Monroe County Women's Commission in its efforts to um, assist women's equity at the local level. We, the Monroe, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim March 2022 as Women's History Month in Monroe County. So, and thank you, um, Commissioner Giffins, for that. We appreciate your work on that. Um, all right, so next we have public comment. Public comment uh, is reserved in this section of our agenda for items that are not on our agenda. Uh, the time limit is three minutes. At two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. And when you hear that tone, that means you have 30 seconds to complete your comments. Um, I will um, um, also note that we would ask you for your name and your whether or not you are a Monroe County resident. Um, it appears we have uh, commenters at the Net U Hill Room. Um, if they could please proceed. Hello, uh, my name is Leslie Green. I'm the CEO for Stonebelt Art here in Bloomington, headquartered here in Bloomington. I am a Brown County resident, but uh, I feel like I'm more or less living in Monroe County because this is where I spend most of my waking hours. I wanted to talk to you today and let you know, if you, if you don't know at this point, that I will be uh, retiring on, as of April 1st and leaving my position. I have been with Stonebelt for 42 years. I've been the CEO for half of those for 21 years. And in relation to women in leadership, uh, Stonebelt has been led by women uh, for all but 15 years of its existence, which is now over 60 years going. We also have uh, 10 uh, director positions and nine of those are occupied by women. I think we've done really well. And uh, we have people that are very, very dedicated to what we do. And even though the last two years have been some of the hardest of my time at Stonebelt, uh, we persevere and we can carry on. And uh, we hope that we're seeing the end of um, the kinds of issues that we've been dealing with. I wanted just to give you a quick overview of what Stonebelt does. Uh, for those of you who may not know in the listening audience, uh, Stonebelt is an organization, as I said, headquarters in, in Monroe County. We do have locations in both Lawrence and Bartholomew County, but well over 75% of the work we do is here. In pre-COVID times, we serve about 1,300 people in, in a year, and we're getting back to that, although our numbers are a little bit down from that. And in here in Monroe County, we have uh, about 70 to 80 people that we support to live in their own homes in their apartments um, throughout the community. We also have eight group homes uh, that have five to seven residents who live in neighborhoods all through the community. We have employment programs that have well over 100, 150 people who are either looking for work, who are working, who need ongoing supports and training. Uh, so we're, we're very, very committed and involved in that. We do operate a facility here in Bloomington. Oh, actually we have two facilities, but the main one that 
that your support uh, offers it to is our, our headquarters at 10th Street, where we have lifelong learning courses, both classroom and community experiences. We also have a work program there where we do uh, about 5 million pieces a year for, for Cook Medical and Cook Urological. We have a variety of people that go out and do volunteer work in the community. So we are about here and about uh, Mineral County quite uh, quite a bit. I said that when I first started at Stonebelt in 1979, it was kind of a place for people to come and be safe. Now I feel like Stonebelt is more of a launch pad, a place for people to come and learn what they need to know and to move on and do what it is they want to do in their lives. Some of them need little support for us on, from us ongoing. Some people need 24 hour, seven day support, but we tailor our services to their need. So I just, uh, I did wanna uh, thank you for the support that you have provided over the years. Uh, I know that our funding uh, comes through the commissioner's budget. Appreciate that you've included us every year. Uh, there, uh, this has been going on since Charlotte was sitting in your, in your role, Charlotte Zitlow. Uh, and uh, so we've had a really good working relationship with the county in all these years. And I just wanted to add my, have my personal thanks to you for all you've done to support Stonebelt in the many ways that you have. I also wanna introduce my successor, for some of you, this may be not the, the uh, introduction may not be necessary because Bitta DeWeese, who the board has chosen to, to take the CEO role starting in April, uh, has been with the organization for 31 years. She's uh, led our employment efforts and has created what I think is the, one of the best employment programs for organizations like our kind in Indiana. And she has also uh, been very, very involved as our chief operating officer for the past year and a half, two years. So she knows the organization well. The transition is, is going very well. She, I'm, I'm giving her the bits, little bits of information that I might have in my role as CEO that she might not, not know, but it will be, she's very, very quick to learn those few things that, that she needs to and to help make sure that our organization carries on in a very, very successful way. So again, thank you. And uh, I will, Bitta has some comments to make as well. Great, thank you uh, so much, Ms. Green. I'm so glad you're here and um, we cannot thank you enough for all of your hard work. 1979, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, appreciate your comments. <laughs> Congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. And congratulations, Ms. DeWeese, from all of us, too. Thank you very much. As Leslie said, I am Betta DeWeese, and I am a Monroe County resident. And I'm so excited to be taking over the CEO role at Stonebelt as Leslie retires. It's some pretty big shoes to fill, as many of you know. She's been an incredible CEO for Stonebelt. I look very much forward though to being only the fourth CEO Stonebelt's had in our 62 year history. I do have a long history with Stonebelt. I'm passionate about the services we provide and the clients and families that we support. During my 31 years, I have been involved with every program that Stonebelt runs. So some more than others, employment obviously being where most of my experience has come from. So I too wanna to extend my thanks to the commissioners for the funds that Stonebelt has received over the many years and your support of Stonebelt. I also wanna take just a couple minutes of my time to give you a little bit of information about where we are currently at Stonebelt and where we're headed. The pandemic has been an incredibly challenging two years for us, keeping clients and staff safe, figuring out how to navigate things, and right now figuring out how to sort of climb back into the services we used to offer, bring clients back that are still at home with their families and, and get support to a lot of our families. So that, that's been a very challenging time. Our number one issue is staffing, finding staff, training staff, keeping staff. I know that's a, a community-wide issue and a nationwide issue, being able to fill the positions that we have. As I mentioned, I've been in employment for most of my career and I've never seen it be this hard to hire staff and, and we can be challenged to hire staff in the best of times. So 
We're working very hard on that. We're making progress and we're trying to help people find careers at Stonebelt and recognize the, the great job that that can be and the rewards that come from helping somebody build a life that they want. And I also wanna talk about some of our initiatives we're moving forward with that I'm really excited about. As we plan for the next couple of years, we've, we're really focusing particularly in Monroe County on changing our, our service model within our day services to be more of an employment first focus. So within our facilities, Leslie mentioned, we have our work program where we do extensive work for Cook Medical. We're working in our other day programs to convert those to training programs that work on work skills. So what I call the soft skills of work, the work, the skills that you need, no matter what job you're gonna work in. So whether that's your social skills, your communication skills, your conflict resolution skills. And we can do that within the context of pretty much any activity somebody's participating in. So for example, if you're in an art program, you certainly can be producing art, but you can also work on getting along with others. So as we make that shift, our real goal is to help more and more of the clients we support find meaningful work or find meaningful activities that are based on what they want to do and what their career plan might be. So I just wanna end with thanking you for your continued support and hope that I can be a resource to you as you may have disability issues come up in our community and that you know you can always reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations, Ms. Green on your retirement and congratulations, Ms. Deweese on your new role. We appreciate your hard work. Uh, both in the past and the future. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's see if there's anyone on uh, Zoom who has a comment to make. Please raise your hand on the screen. All right, seeing none, uh, we will move on to the next item, please. Move approval of the minutes. February 23rd, 2022, Memorandum of Executive Session of the Board of Commissioners and County Council, February 22nd, 2022. But that's second. all. <laughs> second. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we have a motion and we have a second. Any comments, corrections? Okay. Uh, Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on approval of minutes for February 23rd, 2022, and for the memorandum on the executive session from February 22nd, 2022. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you so much. Uh, next item, please. Move approval of claims docket accounts payable March 2nd, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have Mr. Miller here to tell us all about it. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the total for claims was $606,452.95. $153,133.26 was for wheel and surtax distribution for December. $103,195 dollars and three cents was for innkeepers tax collection distribution for February and $48,600 was for purchase of right away parcels for, for the Fullerton Pike phase three, uh, as well as numerous sheriff deputy wiper blades, oil changes, batteries and lights, things of that sort. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Miller. Any uh, comments or questions, Commissioner Giffins? Yeah, I, I noticed there were like a couple of pages worth of, of fleet maintenance <laughs> expenses. Yes. Put in That's why I felt I felt the need to explain that um, <laughs> minimal amounts, but yeah, about four to five pages, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Thank you. Uh, is there any public comment on this item? If there is, please raise your hand on the Zoom screen. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll come back for a vote. Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on approval of the claims docket, accounts payable March 2nd, 2022. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I will note for the record that we have received a report from the Clerk of the Circuit Court for January of 2022. And we've also received the Weights and Measures Report, which spans January 16th to February 15th, 2022. And with that, we will move on to new business. I move approval of Automated Doors and Access Inc. for election operations at 302 South Walnut Street in an amount of $5,945 in an amount to be determined, or in a fund to be determined. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we have Mr. Crohn joining us. Thank you so much. Um, we've got a few items for you, but we'll start with this one. Good morning, commissioners. And for everyone that's listening, this is not deja vu. I know we've been hearing a lot about election operations at 302 South Walnut, but this is just another part of that. Um, in order to improve accessibility for all at the location and to get us into compliance, we need to install uh, two electric door openers on the front entry and exit doors, as well as uh, one exterior uh, ADA push button actuator and one on the interior. And this is for automated door access, who we currently use to provide support and installation for our other applications and other buildings uh, to get those implemented for us. Thank you so much. Comments, questions? Commissioner Giffins? Commissioner Jones? Just thank you for working so fast. Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. All right. Uh, seeing none, uh, Mr. Hopper, will we please call the roll on the Automated Doors and Access Inc. Um, agreement for election operations? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. All right, next item, please. Move approval of Choose Premier Painting LLC for election operations 302 South Walnut Street in an amount of $9,850 and a fund to be determined. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Crone. Yes, um, this is pretty straightforward. The location is obviously the old Napa building, which is now a faded denim color of blue. So uh, we wish to repaint the exterior of the building uh, in colors that go along with the color scheme that's in that downtown location. There would be a primary building color and then a trim accent color. Uh, part of the work that'll have to be done is pressure washing of the mold and mildew that is on the exterior of the building. So that is to clean up the building and paint the entire exterior for us. Thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins. Yeah, I was going to, my, my only question was what color are you going to be choosing or colors, I guess? Yeah. Well, the, the clerk had requested muted colors. The areas around there are earth tones and grays. So uh, we can, I was going to get paint samples and leave that for future discussion on what color we go with. The color we choose doesn't affect the price of the paint. So we just hadn't made that determination yet. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I'm just very pleased that it'll be repainted. It, it will fit in quite a bit better, I think. Yes. All right, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on the agreement with Choose Premier Painting LLC for election operations? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. Thank you. Thank you, and next item, please. Move to approve everywhere signs for election operations at 302 South Walnut Street in an amount of $13,250, the fund to be determined. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Crohn again, please. Yes. Um, the front of the building currently is just exposed directly to the elements, and it was requested by the election board and the clerk uh, for an awning to be provided there to protect the voters from the elements. Um, this is a, a 
quote from Everywhere Signs here in Bloomington to install an awning that will run the full length of the front of the building and will extend out approximately seven feet from the front of the building, which actually will cover that front walk. Um, I've already discussed with the city and we have the green light from them if we choose to install that awning. Um, total for labor and the awning come to $13,250. Thank you so much. Um, comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? Um, yeah, I, I had to read about what this kind of awning was. Is this gonna be cloth or metal yeah. or? Yeah. This, will be, this will be a, a, a canvas cloth uh, awning that's over an aluminum frame that will be mounted to the front of the building. So consistent with what you see with a lot of the business fronts in any street here in our town. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yes, I'm sure the voters will thank you for this. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is the color to be determined, I would assume, based on the building color? Right now, tentatively, we've, we've chosen uh, a royal blue color. Again, the color won't affect, but with the uh, colors that were in the area, that's just what we used to work the quota. But we can change that if, uh, okay. if the color determination is made that that blue will not match with it. Okay, and any lettering on that? No, uh, this is to keep uh, for time constraint, get, trying to get it put together. This doesn't have any lettering, badging, anything on it, just plain non Good, that makes sense, thank you. Um, let's see if there's any public comment on this. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen, please. All right, seeing none, uh, Mr. Popper, will you please call the roll on the agreement with Everywhere Signs for election operations? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. All right, and next item, please. Move to approve Strouser Construction Company Inc. proposal for construction and remodel of election operations at 302 South Walnut Street, in an amount of $42,845, the fund to be determined. Second. We have a motion and a second, Mr. Crum. Yes, so uh, in order to facilitate, to make this work for election operations, and also to meet ADA compliance codes due to the use of the building, uh, some light construction or remodel is gonna be required that location. Uh, one item to be done will be the construction of a 12 by 20 ballot room. Uh, additionally, we'll be adding a second ADA compliant bathroom, bringing the current bathroom that is there up to ADA compliance and the uh, addition of a mechanical room, break room at the end of the office space that's located there. So um, Strasser Construction, Michael Chambly had drawn up plans for us and Strasser Construction uh, has agreed that they can meet the April 5th deadline to complete that construction. So this is a request to approve the proposal from Strasser. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins. I, I was amazed that they could agree to get this done by April the 5th. That was just, oh, wow. He was very We're pleased, very, lucky. very pleased. <laughs> Commissioner Jones. <laughs> I agree with Commissioner Gibbons. Yeah, you, you did so well to find <laughs> uh, um, a contractor that can get this done. And, um, and I'm assuming that um, all of these other elements are also slated to be done before uh, that date as well. Well, one of the things um, with the awning, since the outside of the building is gonna have to be pressure washed and painted, uh, we were going to hold off doing the awning until that work was completed so we don't mess up a, a, an item, a pricey yeah. item. So yeah. um, I, weather is going to be a factor in how we get the building painted. They're going to go ahead and come in and clean it up for us. And but depending on how the weather does, will depend on how, how quickly we can get the paint on. They are trying to get ahead of that April 5th schedule with the paint. But like I said, weather will determine uh, I have to attribute some of the success on how quickly we've been able to bring this together. 
the contractors I've reached out to and the public has been very responsive because of what this facility is going to be to try to accommodate us on this. So I really have to give tip my hat to everybody we're working with on trying to pull this together. That is excellent, excellent news. Um, thank you again so much for organizing all of this, all of these components, all these spinning plates, um, <laughs> and not drop one. So good for you. Um, thank you for that. Um, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. You raise your hand in the Zoom screen. It looks like we have one commenter, Candace. Uh, if you could verify your name and let us know whether or not you're a Monroe County resident, please. Hi, yeah, this is Candace, and I am a Monroe County resident. I just had one question um, on all of these updates. Are they mainly just structural in terms of what was discussed, the awning, the you know additions, what what you what you mentioned? Are there any elements that have anything to do with voting machines or anything like that? Or are these mainly building upgrades? Thank you, um, Candace. Um, these are all just building upgrades. We already have uh, voting equipment in place. Right, right. Yeah, I figured there's already voting equipment in place, but obviously I wasn't sure if any of the updates or upgrades had anything to do with anything else. No, they don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, I don't see any other public comment. Uh, and so with that, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the agreement with Strausser Construction Company, Inc. Uh, for construction and remodel of election operations? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you again, Mr. Crown. You've done great work, appreciate it. Um, our next item is um, a OSHA 300 report on uh, workers' compensation loss run. Um, and we have uh, Ms. Sensenstein here to tell us about it. Um, and I don't know that we need a motion. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, do we need a motion on this? Is this something we need to approve? I, I think this is for your information only. I don't right. think uh, it needs approved. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Sensenstein, would you tell us all about it? Sure. Good morning, commissioners. This is an annual report that I file. Uh, it's due today, um, but I filed it a, a few weeks ago. Um, and the so in the packet is the actual filing that I did and then the uh, sort of a summary of the data that comes from IPEP, uh, the folks who run our workers' compensation uh, program. And um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, um, Commissioner Giffins? Um, yeah, there, there's been a, a big jump in some of these claims over the last year, right? And do we know yeah. why that's happened? Uh, I, I don't think that, I. Usually, I, I talked to you, Penny, yesterday, and usually there is like a, a yearly comparison at the top, um, and that wasn't included for some reason on the report this year. But um, in 2018, there were 49 claims. 2019, there were 40. 2020, there were 36. And then in 2021, there were 44. I think, it, I think that in 2020, the number went down. Um, because of, of COVID, but I think that that 44 number is the average, but I, there were four claims um, in 2021 that uh, accounted for the majority of those costs, and they were just a little bit more severe claims, if that makes sense, um, and so that's why those amounts uh, were a little bit higher. I think our incidents are pretty um, consistent. Uh, you know, we still want them to be less, but uh, I think that there were just some high claims in 2021. Okay, thank you. I, 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 it was actually the dollar amount, not, not the number. Yeah, but, I think yeah, due to the nature surprise. of those injuries, um, they, they accumulated more costs. Well, I hope, I hope our workers then are completely healed. <laughs> Mr. Jones? No, I don't. Thank you. 
Um, I have a quick question. What is the NOC uh, designation on a number of the lines? That's a good question. I'm not sure. It, maybe I can um, answer that. Um, that actually stands for not otherwise classified. That's that would have been my guess. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> good. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, that makes sense. Not otherwise classified. Good. Thank you so much for that. All right. Um, yeah, and those those classifications are set by um, IPEP, and so they right, some right. of them are a little strange and comparison to the departments we actually have like right um yeah we don't really fit into their categories all the mm -hmm. time yeah yes got it excellent all right um let's see if there's any public comment um on this item all right i don't see any thank you for that and now we will move on to um item f Move approval of proposed personnel policy handbook updates. Second. And Ms. Sensenstein, would you tell us all about this? Sure thing. Uh, this We talked about this in the work session a couple weeks ago. I sent it out to uh, the prosecutor and the judges for their approval, and they have approved. So now it just needs uh, formal approval here at your commissioner's meeting. Well, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Giffens? Well, I want to thank Ms. Sensenstein for putting all the recommended changes in red. It made it much, much easier to, and the strikeouts for those we were taking out. So no, it looked very thorough and, and made it, I think, more consistent. I cannot take credit for that. That was Lee Baker in the legal department has been working on this uh, very diligently. So he, I think it helps him too to see them in red. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Thank you. All right. Yes, it was great work. And uh, thank you, Mr. Baker, for your uh, great work on this, too. Uh, let's see if there's any public comments on this item. Please raise your hand on the Zoom screen. All right. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on uh, the proposed personnel policy handbook updates? Mr. Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you so much. Um, we don't have any appointments today. Um, I just have a few announcements. We have, um, we do stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and um, the terrible ordeal that they're facing. And um, as such, uh, we have, um, lift the courthouse in blue and yellow um, to show our solidarity um, with the people of Ukraine. So you could see that at night um, and think about um, the struggle that they're facing uh, in a really difficult time ahead. Um, we do have uh, office hours with uh, members of the Board of Commissioners. There are six different opportunities each month. Just go on to the calendar at co.monroe.in.us and um, find the ins uh, instances on the calendar and um, join the meeting. You'll be placed in the waiting room to begin with. Um, and then you'll be brought in to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, with one of us. Uh, we're really um, happy to provide this uh, service to our county residents. And um, uh, it's your opportunity to offer comment or to ask questions of any of us. So uh, we look forward to speaking with you. Um, we do have some uh, board and commission openings. Uh, go to co.monroe.in.us to see um, the um, uh, application form. And you can fill that out and send that in. Um, and we also um, continue to support the townships uh, with the Township Assistance Fund, which is available to help those who are struggling to meet the basic necessities of life due to COVID. And uh, if you do need assistance uh, for things like rent and utility bills, please contact your township trustee. Every resident uh, in the county lives in one of our townships, whether you live in the city, a town, or neither. 
Uh, you can find that information in our minutes each week. Uh, it's on the emergency management page on our website, and it's also available at uh, by calling 211 or going to in211.org. Um, I will note as well that there are blood drives scheduled uh, for March and for April, um, Tuesday, March 29th, 10 to 3, Wednesday, March 30th, 1 to 6, Monday, April 4th, 10 to 3, and Tuesday, April 5th, 1 to 6. All of these are at Ivy Tech. Big thank you to Ivy Tech for hosting. Uh, to make an appointment, go to redcross.org. Um, and it appears that we will be returning to the NetU Hill Room for our meetings um, and um, all of our uh, boards and commissions um, and other entities will be returning to uh, in-person meetings. So you can see that great shot of the NetU Hill Room with all of our technology set up. That's awesome. Uh, we appreciate uh, and, and really are grateful for our technical services department um, Mr. Evans and your whole team uh, for getting us to this point where we're going to have um, meetings that are going to be both virtual and in person. And that means that when there's uh, still um, infection in the community from COVID, um, we encourage you to attend meetings via Zoom. You will be able to uh, provide comment um, and you can conveniently join um, from outside um, our facilities. This goes for all of our boards and commissions um, and all of our public meetings. Uh, yes, we will be in person, but just to help continue to protect the public and keep our incident rate down, we do encourage you to attend virtually if that's convenient for you. If not, um, you are welcome to come back um, to um, our buildings, our facilities, um, the beautiful Nat U Hill Room uh, in the courthouse, for example. So uh, see if my colleagues have anything else to offer. Um, I wanted to wish Kate Petroline the best of luck. I believe she's leaving us soon. She's been our director of emergency management and one of the people that's put together these blood drives that have proven to be very, very beneficial to the local, local or to the region, actually. Um, so um, she wanted to be closer to her family. And yeah. we all understand that for sure. Yeah, I think as the pandemic's taught us that. Um, and uh, yes, I appreciate you raising this because you're right, she, her last day is uh, Friday, isn't it? I kept thinking it was next week. It is Friday this week. Uh, yes, thank you, Ms. Petroline, for all of your hard work for Monroe County residents. Um, um, she was assistant director for quite some time under Allison Moore and, uh, and then was promoted to the role of director. And she's just done an amazing job. And uh, we're really happy for her and sad for us. This is what I told her in an email. <laughs> so, um, but we will miss her and we appreciate her service. All right, um, with uh, seeing nothing else, uh, can we come back at 11 a.m. for our work session? It's in about 10 minutes. Looks like we have one item on that work session, okay. Excellent. Thanks, you, thanks again, TSD. And um, with that, uh, we're going to adjourn our regular meeting and we'll come back at 11 a.m. for our work session. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>